Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Coffee with T. I'm T, and this is the Men Hurt 2 series. This episode is brought to you by the Leader and Lover podcast. How can a powerhouse woman under pressure tune into her pleasure? Can you be sharp in the boardroom and soft in the bedroom? Tune into the Leader and Lover podcast hosted by Cherie Spigner, where she will discuss aspects of all Black women having it all, relationship, career, status, religion, spirituality, love, and sex. Join the Leader and Lover podcast launching Lover's Day, Sunday, February 14 on all platforms. If you would like a sneak peek, DM on Instagram or Instagram, Leader and Lover. So welcome again to Coffee with Tea and Men Hurt 2 series. Today, I am very, very excited. And I know some of you are because I got inboxes and emails and text messages about this man. So I'm, I'm just as excited as you guys are. So welcome Darren Henson. Darren is an actor, choreographer, de- director, and producer. Darren Henson initially rose to the fame as one of the most notable characters in Showtime's television series, Soul Food. Henson's critically acclaimed portrayal of ex-convict businessman Lem Van Adams demonstrated his work ability to connect deeply with the urban audiences. His work on Soul Food earned him subsequent roles in popular urban films like Stomp the Yard and Life Support. He also had key roles on ABC series Lincoln Heights and more recently the hit dramas VH1 Single Ladies, BET's Being Mary Jane, Lead in Black Coffee, Tech and Master Fight Grant, and now critically acclaimed TV show Carl Weber's The Family Business in a role of Orlando Duncan. Darren has many talents. I got to talk about this. I'm sorry. I I don't really be reading extensive bios, but people really need to know this. Darren has many talents. Henson is recognized as a leading choreographer within the music industry, and his experience includes work with top recording artists, including Jennifer Lopez, Spice Girls, Deborah Kropp, Christina Aguilera, Prince, Britney Spears, NSYNC, Drew Hill, Jagged Edge, and George Michael. Henson's most notable dance routine is NSYNC's Bye, bye, bye. I don't know if y'all remember that, but I do. I'm probably showing my age. His work on the video earned him the MTV Video Music Award for Best Choreographer. So Darren has sent three, sold three million copies of his Darren's Dance Groove, his credit. I mean, Darren, welcome. Just, I'm excited. Listen, I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a long time fan of Lem and I will, I will get into fights over Lem and all kind of other stuff. So welcome. So how, how are you this morning? All is well. I give thanks to the Most High um, for this day, for you. I give thanks for the conversation that we're getting ready to have. And I pray that uh, it will assist other people to become more of who they really are. If I say anything that helps anybody, please give the praise to God. If I say anything wrong, that's that comes from me. Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited. So I always start with asking the men, I think I've interviewed over 34 men now, and it's, it's always so enlightening to know the, what, a, what a Black man goes through from a Black man, because we assume the world tears you guys apart, and I just think you guys need so much more grace and mercy, because we've all been through things. So tell me a little bit about your blueprint. That's the first thing I want to know. Tell me about your relationship with your mom and your relationship with your dad. Well, I always say I come from the best of both worlds. Um, I come from a mulatto mother. In other words, my grandmother, my great-grandmother, and my great-great-grandmother are Italian. Oh. My mother is lighter than you. Um, So back in the days where they say, you know, the paper, the brown paper bag, she would have passed for white completely. Um, And her mother you know, was my grandmother, uh, my father, of course, being a black man, a man of color. Um, So I grew up in the best of both worlds. My mom um, being so light, like Lena Horne white, right, or light um, in the Bronx. uh, And, you know, I had a taste of what it felt like to be in the presence of people who Um, were Caucasian that were Italian and to have a sense of me being a black man very early on, uh, knowing that this is the skin I was gonna have and be in for the rest of my life. I feel I was truly equipped with the knowledge information and then during the course of my life would gain access to the wisdom that I would need to bear this skin. We talk about light skin and dark skin. We talk about colorism. And to have a mom so light 
And one of my friends, she's um, half black and half white, and her sons look very black. They don't they don't look half white and half black. So when she goes to stores and stuff, with everything that's going on in the world, we had conversations about, you know, how was that? You know, you walking around with this little black boy, and she looks white. So she said, you know, she's heard conversations. So how did colorism affect you? And how was it to have a mom so light walking around with a little boy that's so brown? Well, that's what it was like when I was younger. Um, again, I don't have the normal story right. of, of it was hard for me. Um, the interesting thing was my mother, because of her broken relationship with her mother, um, always found a way to have a pride of being half white. Um, right. um, and she would always lean towards it. And in comparison, I feel like my mom tried to use that to her advantage as much as she could when dealing with Caucasians. Ooh. And I remember very early on thinking, um, this benefits us. And... And I would watch my mother always say, oh, my mom's Italian and, or, you know, and, and had, we had really great relationships with Italian people when we were younger. Um, those that were, um, I would say, uh, you know, the, the, the regular Italians and those Italians that we see on TV, if you know what I mean. Yep. Um, so we, we knew the, we knew both worlds. Um, and we're friends with both worlds. Um, and so I never really, I never really saw myself, which is interesting as a black kid. Wow. I never was in a position where I was that black kid. I, I never saw, I always saw myself as Darren DeWitt Henson, never Darren De DeWitt Henson, the black kid. I always saw the world outside of myself, things that were going on, you know, in the 70s, just coming out of the 60s, um, like Dr. King, uh, Malcolm X. And I would go, wow, man, this is, this is rough, you know, but I never, interesting enough, I never saw it as, um, myself being, completely part of or expecting the hardships that black people had or were going through. I never completely saw it as something that I was going to have to deal with. I never saw it that way. Wow. Yo, that's deep. I'm just saying, because we usually connect ourselves to the struggle and you were smart enough as a young child to not connect yourself to the struggle. Cause we have to learn to shift our mindset down and really that every struggle is not our struggle unless we make it our struggle. So tell me a little bit about your relationship with your dad. Was your dad a brown man or? Yeah, yeah, my dad's a black man. Um, he, he's uh, known as one of the world's premier best horse trainers in the world, literally. Wow. Um, you know, I didn't grow up with my father. Okay. My father, um, and my mother separated when I was five. And I didn't see my father again until I was 16. I saw him for one weekend. And then I didn't see him again until I was 27. Wow. How, how did that affect you? If it, if it affected you in any way? It's interesting because once again, my story is different. Um, you know, the common story of the brokenness that most people have and the complaints that they have and my dad wasn't around. And what I learned later on in life, and it was interesting because it was a development process for me, what I learned later on in life was I, I was never angry, upset at my father. I always knew that the most high would allow my father to be in my life. I always knew that we would reconnect. Um, and more so, I focused on what I wanted to do. I focused on becoming the person, the entertainer, the speaker, the bridge, the guide that I 
believe that I am now living in. And I learned um, that it wasn't so much that my dad was absent from my life. It was more like he wasn't in my way. So I could do oh. what I wanted to become. It was more like he wasn't there to tell me you're gonna do this. It was a freedom that I've had to find and hear and know myself. I believe that people nowadays don't know their own voices because they hear the voices and focus on the voices of others so much that they can't truly identify with their real voice because their voice is the voice of others opposed to it being their voice. And I feel like my father was just not in my way so I could become the man that I am today. Woo I love it. He was not in my way. And I'm telling you, you have, it, it's so wonderful that you had this perspective in your life to not be held back. Because I want all of the young men who are listening right now to not use that as a crutch that your father is not in your life. That's up to you because you're only going to be stagnant if you use everything as an excuse. I had a mom who was an alcoholic and a drug addict. I refuse to let that be my story. I right. share it with people to let them understand like you do that. My father wasn't there, but it didn't stop me from being greatness. And That's I'm never right. going to let anything stop me. So tell me, who is Darren Henson, the human being without the titles, at home with family, with your children, with your wife? What, what would they say about you? Uh, well, most would not say very, very nice things. Uh, oh. Darren DeWitt Henson, uh, named by my grandmother, my father's mother, my grandmother Edna, may she continue rising in power. Um, she's always with me. She's always around me. Um, and uh, I would say that, um, and when I said they probably wouldn't say very, very nice things, um, because I believe that, again, I come from a family whose infrastructure um, was broken mm. to... Um, as we talked about briefly a second ago, the pressures that people of color have, that black men have in this country. Um, my father, although a very astute man, uh, which was a very, very wealthy man, um, um, wealthy in spirit, wealthy in knowledge, uh, wealthy in finance, um, didn't have a great deal of wealth when it came to communication with his spouse um, and didn't uh, stay long enough to work it out or, or, or was smart enough to leave because at that time um, it could have been detrimental to his life. Um, so he made a choice to distance himself. And what I learned later on was my father always knew where I was, how I was from a distance because he always had people checking on me. Although I had no idea about it as again, as I say again, five to 16, I never heard from him and then saw him for two days when I was 16 and then didn't see him again until 27. So I came from a very broken family. My grandmother, uh, Maud, um, which was not blood related, but my mother's father's uh, wife. Oh. Who, who helped to raise us uh, in the church, Maud Chadwick, may she continue rising in power, um, gave me my first Bible oh. when I was when I was a very young man and taught me about spirituality, talked to me about having conversations with God, talked to me about listening, about studying the word. And so I think I had a leverage, a momentum advantage because I didn't just focus on my skin color, but as you say, I, I am a human, H-U-E-M-A-N, hue meaning vibratory frequency, color of energy, right? Hue. And so it wasn't H-U-M-A-N, it was H-U-E for me. Yes. Yes. And so 
when I worked within the vibration of spirit, I didn't have to worry about whether or not my skin was black or white. I didn't worry about whether or not another person because I didn't see them that way. And because I didn't see them that way, I believe they didn't see me that way. And so I was able to rise above the common situation that was going on in the world, in America at that time. So for, for whatever reason, and I know that there are many, and most of them are vibratory reasons, I rose above the, not you, you can't. Um, and people saw me as Darren. Yes. And to answer your question, what would my family say well, I think that my children who are older now, I mean, I have a 24, 23, a 20 year old son, right? Um, a, a 17 year old daughter, most people don't know this. So a lot of jaws are gonna be dropping right now. Right. Um, you know, I have to say that when they were young, I was 26, 27 years old, right? So that gives you a little bit of information about my age. Um, I was brand new. I was still figuring out me. Um, there was no soul food yet. There was no Darren's dance grooves yet. And so I took a precedence with dance and choreography that became the communication that I had with most people. Dance was a second language for me. English being the first, but dance was a form of communication for me that gave me an awareness of self. I knew that through dance and entertainment, I could speak and people listen. Mm. It gave me their attention. And I was able to work out emotionally through dance the information I wanted to convey, whether it was going to be powerful or whether it was going to be soft or whether it was going to be a syncopated language, dance is what afforded me that opportunity. So what I did was I sharpened the skills of dance so I could better communicate with people. Mm. And so that led me to acting. And so when I got soul food, I now had a responsibility that I never had. I now had money that I never had. I was working into millions at that point, which was in my early 30s. I had my, my first son when I was 27. Mm. And so now I'm in Toronto for five years of my life, for nine months a year, so now it shifted because I can't be at home all the time because now I'm providing for the family. I'm providing in a way that even on her side had never seen this. When I met her, she was sleeping on a floor on a mattress on the floor. She didn't even have a full structured bed. Mm. She didn't have a dresser to put her clothes in. Whoa. So now yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing facts to the table. This is factory. So now I'm giving my family a life that I didn't have and she didn't have. Now I'm, we're living in a eight bedroom mansion in Montclair, New Jersey, but wow. I'm not home. But you're I'm not working. home. So now there's complaints, mm. right? Then my second son is born. Then my third son is born. I'm still working, more complaining. Whoa. So now I'm seen as a person who's absent, but I'm not really absent. I'm a person that's providing for livelihoods. Right. I'm a person that's providing for a lifestyle that we only dreamed about. But because the level of consciousness was not there it was blame blame yes. blame and so I found myself in a situation that was very similar to Lem good man but dealing with hardships because he was 
a new husband. He was a new dad doing the best that he could. And so the pressures of being a black man set in in my 30s. Right. Not in my teenage years, not in my 20s. Interestingly enough, it came when I was successful. Mm. It came in my 30s when I became a dad. Wow. It came that way when I became a man of great responsibility. Then the pressure of a black man came and it came with haste, which was very interesting because the more man I was becoming, the wealthier I was becoming, the more responsibility I had, the deeper the pressure of mm. me knowing you're a black man, Darren. Wow. That was the interesting part and is the interesting part for me. Wow. Oh my goodness. See, people don't know, and I just want to interject here. People don't know, they assume the, from the tabloids and from media and what they hear. This is why I have this platform. I want to know the real Darren. I know you're not just going around here being reckless and hurting people and doing all this other stuff, but people want to judge and point fingers and not know that I'm out here trying to provide. They over here complaining, but they eating the fruit. You can't eat the fruit and complain at the same, either you want the fruit or you want the mattress on the floor. You got to tell me because I'm not sure. So continue, please. You know, I it's it, it was a very difficult time and I had to work through this because this is when I really started to develop pain. I would have anxiety attacks. Um, again, this is during a very wealthy period. You know, 5 million copies of Darren's Dance Groove sold, soul food hit TV show. I was making millions of dollars in my early 30s. Mm. And... I'll never forget when my daughter was born, I was on set and I tried to charter a private plane from Toronto to New York. Um, and the producers wouldn't let me go home because we were in the middle of shooting. Right. And I called her and, and she tried to, you know, women try to hold babies in so the father or family, but it's right. not, <laughs> he tried to hold it. And, you know, I, I give her all due respect and, and admiration for everything that she tried and, and love for, for that moment. But again, and the producers and writers will attest to this. They said, Darren, we're shooting the show here. We, we need you to, to do these scenes, you know, and they got me out of there as soon as they could, but I wasn't there when the birth actually happened. Wow. And what I could tell you was, I paid for that every day. Hmm. I was never allowed to live that down. Oh. It was always a finger that was pointed at me about me not being there. I can't tell you what I went through mentally, emotionally, physically because of that. Wow. I, I can't tell you how I was beat up because I wasn't there when my daughter came out. And I just thought, man, I mean, and it wasn't so cut and dry. I mean, it was, it was real pain associated, arguments associated, um, you know, distrust developed. But I thought about it and I was like, I was working, I was providing. And when I say a lifestyle, that most people would do a lot for. I'm talking about in-home assistants, maids, cooks. I mean, I could run the gamut. And again, I'm not bragging. I'm not trying to no, impress right. anybody, but I'm impressed upon them the lifestyle that was developed early on from a man and a woman who had nothing I sat in the position of provider, father, and I learned this from Tony Robbins. You can be unsuccessful and have everybody love you, or you can be incredibly successful and have the pain of people complaining about you for not being around. Wow. And wow. I saw it in a movie one time with Denzel Washington, American Gangster. And Armand DeSante's character said, 
to Frank Lucas. Frank, you can be successful and have enemies or you can be unsuccessful and have friends. That's it. And I thought about that and I said, wow. I didn't have somebody to prepare me for this. Oh. Nobody taught me about what to do with wealth. Nobody taught me how to secure and invest money. Um, no one taught me how to deal with the hardships of family. Um, and so I learned they don't call it growing pains for nothing. Wow. And I don't point the finger at anybody because I did a lot of, I call them mistakes. People say mistakes, but it's a mistake, meaning I'm going to try. I failed a lot. Hmm. I failed at, you know, doing certain things a certain way. Right. I, learned. I failed at certain relationships, but I don't consider it failure because I learned. Yeah. And I learned through those things. It was unfortunate that I, I, and fortunate, you know, you can't really enjoy the daylight without knowing what it's like in the night. Mm. You can't really enjoy the warmth of the sun unless you know what cold is. Mm. And so I learned a great deal about Darren DeWitt Henson about who I am and what I am here to do. I learned that my voice that I use, I learned that my talents were not just for me, but they were to be shared with the world. I learned that the hardships and the experiences that I had, the ups and down were to be shared. I learned to pay it forward by teaching young men and young women um, a better route. And mm -hmm. so what I learned was I am like that unto a bridge that assist people so they can have a better crossing. Wow. Woo. I learned that, you know, the old adage, a fool learns from his own mistakes, that I could be the bridge that says, but a wise man or woman can learn from the mistakes of others. Mm. Darren, listen, I'm, I'm about, listen, that's a whole book right there. So we talked a little bit on the back end, and, and I just want people to understand that Darren is a human. Things hurt Darren. Things hurt famous people. The stuff that people say, it doesn't just affect Darren. It affects the wife. It affects the kids. It affects the nieces, the nephew, the parents. So we need to be careful. Like we talked on the back end a few minutes ago about Chad with Bossman. And there was a picture that came out of him. We None of us knew he was sick. And I, and I so love his team of people and the people who are around him because nobody knew anything until he passed away. Now that's loyalty and just a level of respect that a lot of us don't get. But people were tearing him apart when we saw that. It was one picture that somebody must have put out and he was really sick at that time. And, and people were like, oh, he looked like he a crackhead. And I'm like, you know, this is a human being. How do rumors and, and things affect you? And I know a lot of times men be like, it don't bother me, but how does it affect you as not Lem, but how does it affect you as Darren as a human? Well, I could tell you this. Um, again, best of both worlds. I've been the not so nice guy in my life, you know, and I've, and I've been a really good man in my life. Mm. I've, been, I've been both of those people. Um, I, I, I have some horror stories I could tell about myself. Right. And I have some things that people will go, wow. And I go, no, I don't want praise. I give thanks to the most high for giving me a spirit of empathy, for giving me a spirit of giving. Um, you know, I think people tend to project um, because of where they are in the world. And it's easier to talk about somebody else than to talk about yourself. True growth comes from dealing with the darkness within yourself. And, you know, the darkness has a great power and you have the ability to do so much growing in the darkness. I mean, think about it. We're created in triple darkness, 
in the womb of a woman. Ooh. In triple darkness, a light is sparked that becomes a life. When you go to sleep, you close your eyes, you're in darkness, but your body corrects itself and regenerates itself mm -hmm. in that darkness. So I go back to scripture, as above, so shall it be below. So above, we look at the stars, but they're always exploding in, in terms of creation, right? It's the same thing with us. Something has to break up and explode in order for something else to be born. And what happens is I think people run from that. So right. it's easy to point the finger. It's easy to say, that's what that is because we're not looking at, this is what this is with ourselves. Again, when we speak about Chadwick, may he continue to rise in power. That man came here and did what he was sent here to do. Hmm. He created a legacy while he was here. He created a platform for himself and others while he was here in the physical. And this is why we say his name, because he was obedient to his mission while he was here. We don't control um, certain things. The only thing we control is our thoughts and our actions. Yes. And so what I would say to most people, before you perpetuate the pointing of fingers, turn it around and say, am I where I want to be? Do I feel the way I want to feel? Am I being the best of me? Am I living in a way that I can be proud? My mother can be proud. My father can be proud, not because I'm doing what they wanted me to do, but because I am adding value to myself, my family and my community and to the world. Am I listening to the voice inside of me that says go, grow and glow? Am I doing the things that I was sent here to do? Am I playing my part in the grand scheme of things? Do I feel good? Am I resonating on the highest frequency that I can resonate? Am I smiling? Am I laughing? Am I sharing? Am I giving? One of the things that I have learned is that giving is not better than receiving. And receiving is not better than giving. They're both the same. And this is how I know. Because in order to give, your hands have to be open. In order to receive, your hands have to be open. Wow. So when they taught us, it is better to give than to receive, they were probably on the receiving end teaching. <laughs> it is the same. They both serve a purpose. When you give, your hands have to be open. When you receive, they have to be open. When you receive, use what you have been given and then give the rest. Wow. Wow. This is, listen, listen. So you talked about, because you know I went and did my research on you, even though I knew Lem. Like, listen, we used to fight over you when you was Lem. I said, I got to know Darren. I mean, we, we would get, like, Lem is my man. You better not be talking about my man. You better get out of here. I'm like, wow, we really loved you because you made that character come to life. But you also talk a lot about spirituality. You talked about planting the seed and waiting for the harvest, basically. What do you do in a waiting season? Some of, we wait, some of us have planted seeds and it ain't come, it been four or five years. We didn't plant, what do you do in a waiting season? And what, how would you ex tell people how to be patient in a waiting season? I have had so many teachers. I've had so many mentors and have so many mentors. I'm probably the most impatient person that you've ever spoken to. <laughs> so I'm, I'm still learning patience. Um, but what I have learned is when I tried to move without being patient, I had to deal with correction. In my relationships, when I was impatient, I had to pay the, pay the price. When I didn't listen and I wasn't patient about learning people and just focused on people's appearance, I paid the price. Yes. You know, 
you can't judge a book by its cover. Never. Um, and, and don't just look at the shiniest thing, right? We can look at the shiniest thing. That ain't a diamond. That's a zirconian, right? It's, it's not real. <laughs> it didn't go under pressure, right? right? You don't know a person until they've been under pressure and have gotten through to the other side to tell a good story. Mm. There are a lot of people who, you know, men could put on some some great clothes and, and have a dope haircut. Women can can put on some makeup and look great. What have you gone through? What have you gone through and learned through? What have you gone through, grew through, and then glow through, right? No, we like shiny objects. We like what looks good, men and women. And so I had to learn to use and develop patience. And it is now in my life that I'm activated more so with patience because with age should come wisdom. And again, when I look back at my life, I, I really, so far, I look back at my life so far, I think about some of the people that I've hurt. And let me say publicly to these people, I hope they see this. And I've said it to them um, many different ways. I apologize. I am not the same person today that I was then. I, I grew through it. I learned what I didn't know. Um, I've become um, a more responsible man, a more empathetic man, a more loving man, a more forgiving man. One of the things with me, I wasn't forgiving. When people hurt me in a verbal way, a physical way, a mental way, I wasn't forgiving. But what I learned is it does more damage to me than it did to them, not forgiving. Wow. Because if you can't forgive, then the person really that you're not forgiving is yourself. Woof. And if you don't forgive yourself, you can't mature, you can't grow, you can't hear, you can't receive because everything is blocked. Everything is closed. Everything is closed. Everything is closed. Everything is closed off. And people who go through great pain in life is because they closed off very early. So what I say to those brothers in the spirit of this um, cast, men hurt too, simply means just because a man can be an alpha, just because he can be a provider, a protector, doesn't mean he doesn't feel pain. He may cover the pain. He may shelter the pain within himself, but then that means he's going through even more pain. And sometimes when you see a man screaming, sometimes when you see him act out, sometimes when you see him joining a gang, sometimes when you see him abusive, sometimes when you see him just irate, sometimes when you see him running, it's because he's not dealing with the pain. He doesn't know how to deal with the pain. So what I would say, even though it's difficult, don't try to deal with the pain. Bring a village with you. Mm. Bring an elder with you. Bring a spiritualist with you. Bring an accountant with you. Bring a child with you. Bring a village to talk to him and surround him because he's going to try to buck and break when you go. But when you got that spiritual person around you, he's going to be praying. When you got the elder around you, they're going to have the eyes of wisdom there, the hands of wisdom there. When you have a child with you, the innocence is going to be there to say it's okay. It's not going to stay this way. You're going to be able to grow through it, right? When you got the feminine energy, he's going to just drop and know that everything's going to be okay because now nature's there. Why? Because nurture, which is the feminine, comes from nature. So he's going to have the balance of what he needs. Bring the village with you when you're dealing with that man that's broken and hurt. Bring the village with you. Wow. Darren, listen here. You, are you about to have me over here in tears because this is so powerful. What what do you what's the one thing that you want people to just really know about you as a as a person and as a man? I think I just said it. Mm -hmm. 
it just came to me. I never said it in that way before. Wow. The most high just put that on my heart. That's the best way I have ever said how you can help a man who's in pain bring the village with you. Yes. What, what, what will be Darren's legacy? I will tell you that in the future. Okay. I accept that. I, I accept the person who knows when this is my time. There's so much that is still on my heart. What I would say is to everyone that is gonna watch and hear this, your history is not yet fully written. Oh. You'll have work to do. People keep telling us our history, our history. Your history is not yet fully written. We're still writing it. And once you realize that, once you get tuned in, tapped in, and turned on to, you are in creative mode. See, the reason that I don't go backwards is because I'm living in the now, my new opportunity window. Now, new opportunity window. I'm in creative mode right now talking about what is to come. Yes. The past is, I mean, your history is not yet fully written. Wow. That we still got work to do. Lots of it, lots of it. I'm gonna give you and some it, words. Go ahead, go always, ahead. It all, sorry, it all, no, I'm not sorry. Excuse me, may, may, may I say one more thing? Yes, okay. please, yes. It always works out in the end. And if it hasn't completely worked out, it's not the end. Mm, 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 mm. Lord have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. I'm sorry, I'm about to go to church in here because I'll be feeling the Holy Spirit and it, it will move me to talk and keep going. So we have a few more minutes left. So I want to give you three words and I just want you to tell me what those, when, it, when they pop in your head, what do they mean to you? Woman. Devout. Woo. Faith. Constant. Wow. Integrity. A must. We so now I just want to give us some time to talk about what you're doing now. You have, I thank you today for your transparency as a black man. It's not hard. The world has taught you, listen, don't put your guard down because we're going to use it against you. And, and it's so sad that our black men can't. And like you said, you have sons. I have three boys, 26, 21, and 11. And some damage was done to them on the road, on my road of life. And I had to start doing things to heal, to take my boulders off their back. Cause unfortunately they were in my car of life. And I totally get you have, I had my first son at 25. I didn't know nothing. And people can judge you so harshly. That was, you know, sometimes we have our first. Uh, this is my first time being 51. I don't know what I'm doing. This is my first year being 51. I don't know what a 51 year old does. So I'm just going with whatever the spirit tells me to do. So I had to explain that to my sons. Everything that I'm doing in my life, honey, is a first. And, and I had some bad examples of what other people's first look like from their experience. So I had to learn to disconnect myself from the dysfunctional experiences of my parents and those around me who just didn't know any better so that I could do better and have a different experience in my life. So I, I just want to give, just thank you again. Like, yo, this was so good. I'm just going to watch this probably like 50 times. But I want to talk about some new things that you're doing. I, I've looked up some stuff, XOD Network your t-shirt line. I just want you to tell people right now what's important for them to know about you, what you're doing now and where they can find you. Thank you. And, and, and I appreciate you and I'm thankful to you and for you. Um, and uh, I just want people to know that I'm a bridge. And so I want to be of use to people. Hmm. You know, Muhammad Ali, I believe it was his quote. He says that the, the, the rent you paid for living this life is helping others. Hmm. And, and so, you know, rent is due. And wow. so it's, we, we have to consistently assist other people so they can help themselves. And my t-shirt line, which is called God's Billboard T-shirts, um, is about being a billboard for God. Yes. Being a billboard for good, 
right? Being billboard for affirmations, affirming your health, affirming your wealth, affirming your happiness, not asking, but affirming that you have it already. And so I created um, God's Billboard t-shirts, www.godsbillboardtshirts.com. And um, so please, everybody, get yourself a t-shirt, get, get one for your family members and friends. It's, it's, it's about empowerment. Um, and it's about being a billboard for God. Uh, so I have that company. Also, I am producing a television series that I also star in called Double Cross. Shout out to them Gibsons, Crystal and Howard Gibson, who created the show, uh, Double Cross, the number one show on the All Black Network. Yes. Um, uh, and uh, the second season is streaming right now on All Black. Uh, so download the app and watch the show. And then uh, we are currently filming the third season of Carl Weber's The Family Business, which is on BET Plus. And I play Orlando Duncan on that show. Um, and the XOD network, so download the XOD app because you can watch the Darren Henson channel and watch the movies that I've directed and produced. Um, and we have documentaries on there. Um, we have Tony Minaj who represents her documentary, um, which is a very, very powerful documentary about this woman. Um, you know, uh, who, who, who comes out of Harlem, whose story is just phenomenal. That's on there. My Get Fit and Stay Fit uh, health and fitness DVD is on there. And Darren's Dance Screws 1 and 2 is on there as well. And then we're going to be bringing more movies and television shows and reality shows to the XOD network on the Darren Henson channel. I'm going to be on the Darren Henson channel with Man Hurt too. I'm going to speak that into existence because we need this. But I love this that just because people don't see you like they think they should see you doesn't mean you don't have things going on. You got a whole channel. Folks be judging, oh, he fell off or he not. Listen, everything ain't supposed to be loud and abrasive. Something's going to sneak up on you. Right. you and, and people have to understand just because you don't see a person doesn't mean they're not planting a seed and it's about to sprout from the dirt. I think people attack people because they're not living uh, to their fullest and highest potential. So they start to attack people because they're not spending enough time on themselves. And yes. if you are spending time on yourselves, you don't have enough mental energy to worry about what someone else is doing. Puffy always talks about that. Yes. You know, P. P Diddy is like, look, the secret to my success is I'm not worrying about what somebody else is doing. You know, people thought that Cardi B was just on Instagram. No, she was shot a whole video. She was in dance rehearsal. She created a whole rap. She was in the studio. You didn't see you do it. Right. You know, whether whether I agree with the song or the video or not, it doesn't matter. What we're talking about is people are focused on their personal legends. Right. So don't think everything you see is the only thing that is. But again, I'm not here to prove anything to anyone. I'm here to listen to what the Most High would have me do. I'm here to take the teachings of my grandparents and do what I was guided to do. And then once I could, you know, we crawl before we walk and then we, we walk and then we learn how to run. And so it was about learning my own pace. And yes. so now I'm living my life in a way that becomes a servitude to people. This interview, I believe that we're serving. You created this platform to serve. Yes. And so I was very, very thankful to Nakia. Yes, Nakia. Who, who introduced us. Um, and I'm so thankful for this time and this platform and you, and you have taken your lessons in life and you've turned them and made them jewels to give to other people. And so that's what I'm doing with, with my life as well. I just want to, you know, continue growing and, and sharing with people so they can go, wait a minute. I learned about that. So I'm not going to allow that to happen to me. I learned about that. It's like reading a book. 
the pictures unfold in your head as you read it. Well, when I tell my stories, allow the pictures to unfold so they can assist you so you can get to where you want to go. Oh my goodness. You, you are awesome, Mr. Henson. I am um, honored and humbled to be in your presence and your greatness. And I just want you to give one final word to the black men who are listening, a final thought. Allow yourself to listen long enough to heal. Allow people to help you, ask for help. Allow yourself to be still enough that you can hear the inner voice of reason. You can hear the spirit calling you to a higher place of thought. Thoughts are things that will ultimately, ultimately manifest in the physical world. Before anything happens in the physical world, it has to be a thought. Tune in, tap in, turn on to the thoughts of life, mm. of love, of energy, of expansion, of giving, of receiving. And I would say those people who come to help you from this day forward, allow them. Don't push them away. There's something there for you. Mm. It may be difficult to receive because we're not taught how to receive. You know, when somebody says, thank you, the people go, oh, no, 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 thank you. No, no, no. Receive it first and say you're welcome and thank you. Wow. But yes. receive it first. Say you're welcome. Know that you are more than enough and you are already validated by the most high. You don't need other people's approval. So when someone says thank you, say you're welcome because yes. you're worthy of that thanks and yeah. allow that to grow and always reach for the best feeling that you could reach for. And I wanna tell people this because they may not know this. Any thought that you have for 17 seconds births an exact thought just like that. So wow. if you're thinking negative for more than 17 seconds, you're gonna have another negative thought. But if you have a positive thought and you hold that positive thought for 17 seconds, it's gonna birth another thought and another thought and another thought. Allow that to be the practice that you have. The positive thoughts of gratitude. I'm thankful for rising today. I'm thankful for a great conversation. I'm thankful for somebody reaching out. I'm thankful for somebody giving me and I'm able to receive. I'm thankful for this water, this bed. Wow, this bed is so comfortable. I'm, I'm thankful for the warmth in this house. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful, I'm thankful, I'm thankful, I'm grateful. And you will have so much more to be grateful and thankful for. Focus on the positive in life. And I know for some people it's hard, but just try it, practice it and watch it. And when it happens, go, yeah, I did that. I did that. Yeah. I practiced that into my vibration, into the manifestation and give thanks to God, give thanks to the most high. In that second, in that moment, just say, thank you. I'm learning and I'm growing and now I'm glowing. Yes. Thank you so much. If you just tuned in, we had just the most powerful conversation. And this 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 um, episode was brought to you by Leader and Lover Podcast. How can a powerhouse woman under pressure tune into her pleasure? Can she be sharp in the bed boardroom and soft in the bedroom? Tune into the Leader and Lover Podcast hosted by Cherie Spigner, where she will discuss all aspects of Black women having it all, relationship, career, status, religion, spirituality, love, and sex. Join the Leader and Lover podcast launching Lover's Day Sunday, February 14th on all platforms. If you would like a sneak peek, DM on Instagram, Leader and Lover. Thank you, Darren, for your time and your talent. Thank you for your transparency and your truth, because I believe truth plus transparency equals healing, not only our healing, but the healing of others. I wish you well. I will support everything that you're doing. I cannot wait to get my t-shirts. So everybody, please go and purchase your t-shirts to support Darren because he just gave us a wealth of knowledge. And as he said, when someone gives to you, open up your hands and give back. When you receive something from someone, open up your hands and give something back. So please go support everything that he's doing. Watch his new programs. Be looking out for his new um, channel, please. We got to support each other as Black people. So again, I thank you guys for tuning into the Men Hurt 2 series. I'm your girl, Trey Kearney, and I'll see you guys on our next episode. Peace and blessings.